and welcome. My name is Kathy A and it has been far too long since I've done one of my infamous docutorials. This is a history and a face demonstration of all the products from a particular brand. The history is really really interesting and I call this combination of history and demo a docutorial. This particular one is near and dear to my heart because, spoiler alert, this is my favorite brand of makeup. Now, um, I try to be fair with the story and do justice to the parties at hand, and I kept out some of my personal feelings about my own experiences in Mac stores because they didn't necessarily jive with what was being presented in the book. Um, I have not had a good experience in a Mac store actually and I think it's kind of funny in a way that they talked about the customer service and the extreme um, how they spend an extra long time with people and everything. I, you know, it was kind of funny. Maybe it's because I'm an older person and I wasn't the target audience. I don't know, but um, I think that hurt Mac in many ways as far as being a brand that's still recognized. When I started my YouTube channel back in 2013, everybody talked about Mac products. Um, it was a way you compared things and I think even to this day if you're looking at foundations they'll say well what color are you in Mac you know and it's kind of like that to me really says a lot what color are you in Mac and I think um, I still love Mac I do like a lot of the other um, brands that have come out and when Mac was out there weren't quite as many brands especially really edgy young uh, modern kind of brands that had really interesting and healthy formulas so we didn't have the same choices back then and I think Mac was a lot more popular because there weren't really any competitors in that same field and that's not the case nowadays so I think that it's a little bit, Mac is kind of a little bit more subdued and in the background, but they are always there. So I don't want to hold you up any further. Here is the history of Mac Cosmetics. The story of Mac begins with these two men, Frank Toscan and Frank Angelo, affectionately known as the Franks. Frank Toscan was born in Italy in 1951. His family moved to Canada when he was six. As a child, Frank became the translator for his parents and also the babysitter for his three younger siblings. He resented his lifestyle at home and was a rebellious teen, but later he was grateful for the strong work ethic and drive it gave him as an adult. He studied hairdressing and architectural design later, pursuing makeup and artistry and photography. Frank Angelo, no Tarangelo originally, was born in Toronto in 1949. He knew, even as a young, ambitious child, that he was destined to be a business mogul. As a teen, Frank loved music and was in a band. He worked deals with local venues, even a military base, to play concerts. As an adult, he invested in hair salons, and by the time he was 21, he had a chain of 37 unisex salons called the Hair Cutting Place. Frank would later become the business brain of Mac. The Franks met at a gay bar, and it was a fun place in Toronto called Manatee. It was instant romantic relationship and four years later would become a business partner as well with these two. Angelo cleverly had some of his salons located in the popular department store Simpsons, later known as The Bay, and Toscan photographed hair models in his studio and hung them in the salons. He also photographed models, drag queens, and strippers. Toskin wanted to develop hair products for the salons. His sister, Julie, who worked at the salon, was dating a chemistry student named Vic Casali. Together, Toskin and Vic formulated a new shampoo called Hairdresser's Choice. 
This led to creating more products to be sold at the salons and was used by the stylists. Hair salons use a lot of towels and Angelo decided it would be cheaper to buy a building that housed a laundromat. This building also was a warehouse for hair tools and products and was turned into a distribution center of sorts. Towel service was offered for salons all over town. The upper rooms were used to create new products and also Toskin's photo studio. Toskin's hair products were popular and sold well. His close friend, singer Gladys Knight, asked for help. She uh, needed a hair strengthening product for her hair, which was damaged from some of the harsh hair products and straighteners available at the time for black hair. Toskin and Casali created Formula K, and he sold it at a trade shows and markets right out of the back of a truck. I always wondered if the K was for night of Gladys Knight. On a trip to Beverly Hills, Toscan noticed a display of colorful makeup in his favorite store, Fiorucci. The brand was Il Maquillage. He asked about distributing the, the line in Canada and flew to the New York head office to strike a deal. Even yours truly likes this brand. He would import Il Maquillage. Toscan rented space in Simpson's department store near the teen clothing section. His makeup was not like the more conservative high-end brands of the day, so he was put in a separate floor. Toscan incorporated this new makeup business under the name Makeup Art Cosmetics. Toscan curated professional grade cosmetics that he knew makeup artists would and theater people would love, including special effects master Ben Nye's line he was a proven theater uh, supplier and, uh, and thought that it would complement the bright colors and mattes of the Il Maquillage makeup. A sign that read Makeup Art Center was placed around his booth. He would later shorten it to three letters, M-A-C. With the Canadian dollar dropping in value, it became too expensive to keep importing Il Maquillage from the USA. He decided to drop the Il Maquillage line and knew he needed to replace it with something comparable fast. Theater makeup of the day was thick, greasy, and often went shiny on the skin under hot lights. He needed highly pigmented matte makeup that showed well in photos and on stage. And it had to be healthier for the skin as greasy makeup caused skin breakouts and he decided to create it himself. Toscan remembered Gladys Knight's difficulty finding a good skin tone makeup match and how so many darker skinned people had limited choice of colors, textures, and formulas. He was inspired to create this new makeup line for the drag queens, models, actors, musicians, makeup artists, goths, and fashionistas he saw on the streets of Toronto and in the clubs. Lighter skin blondes seemed to be the target audience for most makeup companies of the day, and Toscan found them to be boring and too much alike in shades and formulas. Toscan set up a lab in the laundromat office and teamed up with Vic Caselli to create the new Makeup Art Cosmetics line. Together, Frank and Vic studied Casali's chemistry textbooks for ingredient ideas using a hot plate, scales, powder press, and a Cuisinart. They experimented first using existing products and adding their own ingredients to make new healthier formulas as Toscan wanted skin care in the makeup. They often added in vitamin A, vitamin E, and a new silicone ingredient called dimethicone, formerly used only in breast implants. Creating the perfect red lipstick took hundreds of phototypes based on a Crayola crayon color. The very first MAC product to come out of the tiny little lab was Russian Red, a beautiful shade that complemented all skin tones. Makeup Art Cosmetics was born. 
They hired makeup artist Frances Hathaway, later famous for applying makeup on Lady Diana for her 1986 portrait, and, suggest and she suggested that Toscan and Angelo hired Donald Robertson, and an illustrator much in demand for his edgy and modern art pieces often appearing on magazine covers. Donald took an image of Toscan's three-letter design of MAC and stretched it on the Xerox machine create the iconic Mac logo. Toscan insisted on unique and aesthetically pleasing packaging. Eyeshadows were sold individually with clear screw tops so makeup artists could select only the colors they needed and would be able to quickly glance at the color through the top. Max bullet shaped lipstick case was originally manufactured by Colt Firearms Plastic Division using real bullet casing molds. MAC products are also never tested on animals. Toscan relied on human testing and feedback from the makeup artists and stylists. Outer packaging showed all the ingredients because MAC had nothing to hide. This was highly unusual for the cosmetic industry at this time in the 1980s. Made in small batches, each of their 300 products were sent as samples to makeup artists to test and give valuable feedback on, and Toscan opened the first standalone Mac store on Carlton Street in Toronto. He needed additional staff for the store. In Simpsons, other makeup counters were conservative and in stark contrast to Toscan's Makeup Arts Center. Toscan wanted kindness and diversity and hired men, women, and drag queens, encouraging loud hairstyles, tattoos, and piercings. Makeup Arts Center practices were groundbreaking in the industry. Toscan's booth had chairs where customers could receive makeup applications. He hated the term makeovers. Using face charts, makeup artists could write all the products they used in the session so the customer could purchase them easily. Each consultation was a makeup lesson and staff were encouraged to spend as much time as needed with each customer. On a side note, Tossin disliked the 80s trend called Color Me Beautiful, which limited color choices based on your seasonal shades. He felt it was inhibiting personal identity and creative choice. Frank Angelo purchased a beauty school. This gave Toscan the opportunity not only for testing hair products, but also he'd get additional feedback from students on MAC Cosmetics. This made them feel like they were helping an exciting new brand grow. Toscan released a video on how to apply makeup on VHS. In 1989, Frank's friend, Debbie Mazar, was preparing Madonna's 1990 Blonde Ambition Tour. Debbie asked Toskin for a red lipstick that could withstand hot stage lighting and have the staying power to last through Madonna's grueling physical performances. He gave her Max Star product, Russian Red Lipstick, and when Madonna revealed to the press her lipstick brand, Mac was inundated with her fans buying up products. Toscan's phone rang off the hook with requests from potential retail partners. Henri Bendel in New York convinced Toscan to place a Mac counter in their USA store. Toscan admired Bendel's creative sourcing and product risks. Frank hired his New York Mac staff to man the booth and he flew there every weekend to monitor the team and listen to customer feedback. He was a very hands-on approach kind of guy. Mac was also placed in Nordstrom stores in the US and became really popular. A Nordstrom side story is that a male Mac staffer came to work one day wearing makeup and Nordstrom fired him. Linda Ronstadt knew him and staged a protest in front of the store. He was rehired and the HR policies were rewritten, 
to be more flexible. Naomi Campbell helped spread the word about all the great shades in the MAC line for darker skin tones. And MAC had a good reputation with the LGBTQ community as well because of their inclusive store practices and policies. Toscan worked with designers, stylists, makeup artists, journalists, and media personalities to help grow the brand. While MAC did not advertise, they gained popularity from unsolicited celebrity endorsements, such as Cher, Boy George, Janet and Michael Jackson, Pamela Anderson, and Deborah Harry, among others. With over $10 million in sales, Tuscan opened a standalone store for Mac in New York. The Franks hired well-known makeup artist Jane McKay and trained her to train the staff. To this day, she remains the senior trainer at Mac. Toscan created Back to Mac program for recycling plastics. You simply return any six empty containers or lipsticks of Mac products and you receive a free lipstick or other product in return. Recycled containers were broken up and sorted by the Mac employees at their new factory in Toronto and sent to the recycle center. Toscan visited stores and gave interviews often. This elevated the brand across America. In the 1980s, AIDS, formerly known as GRID, gay-related immune deficiency, spread rampantly through the art community. While society was mildly sympathetic and judgmental, government leaders ignored the situation, not lending any financial support for the cause or for research to end it. Charity groups sprung up locally to assist the victims and their families. They relied on donations from everyday people. Volunteers visited victims, gave them rides, or ran errands. Sons, lovers, neighbors, co-workers, friends, brothers, uncles, and fathers were all lost. The physical and emotional strain of visiting, caring for, dealing with death, and grieving took its toll on everyone, and protests seem futile. After the loss of a beloved movie actor and later a nun and a little boy who contracted AIDS from a blood transfusion, society finally took notice and research began, funding happened, and treatments were invented to help victims live longer and better lives. The loss to the art community was immeasurable. Beautiful people died by the thousands. Determined to help raise money for local AIDS groups, the art community organized an event called Fashion Cares. Mac donated all the makeup for the show and became a main sponsor as Fashion Cares became an annual event. Proceeds from the show helped ACT groups and AIDS charities with much needed funding. A collectible t-shirt signed by designers was sold for charity as well. And Mac often created t-shirts uh, to sell in their shops. Frank Angelo started the Mac AIDS Fund. Money received from events, special product sales, and projects would go to every AIDS HIV connected charity in Toronto. Mac Kids Helping Kids. They gave children affected by AIDS all the materials and art supplies to create Christmas cards. The best six designs were selected and made into sets of six cards for $6 or gift tags. Proceeds went to social services, helping children and babies in need buying diapers and formula. 
These were sold at Nordstrom and Mac stores. Shrouded in Mystery, Toskin released Mac's very first advertisement poster. It was for a very special lipstick he named Viva Glam. A misprint at the lab caused the red lipstick to appear blue, but Toskin liked the effect and kept it. This ad coincided with Mac's search for a spokesmodel for the brand. In 1991, Toskin had attended a drag show in New York called Wigstock. It featured a young, talented performer named RuPaul. As the first man ever to be the face of a cosmetics company, RuPaul was perfect. He was a man, a woman, a drag queen, and he was a star. RuPaul was photographed spelling each letter of Viva Glam using his body. It was quite controversial for the day, especially the letter M. So in, instead of posters, which some of the shops refused to put up, Toskin printed up color postcards and they had them at the counters to announce the release. Viva Glam was based on Russian red and had a special case and a box. 100% of all sales, distribution, and production went into Mac AIDS Fund charities. Toskin himself posed for the second Viva Glam poster with KD Lang. There would be a new Viva Glam shade and a new Viva Glam model each year after. Viva Glam celebrated their 25th anniversary using model Winnie Harlow, recreating RuPaul's iconic letter poses. The case was updated with glitter and a 25th year logo. Max Aid Fund has raised around $500 million over the course of 27 years. Mac also sponsored other charitable events such as a benefit PETA fashion show people for the ethical treatment of animals. In 1994, the Franks quietly ended their 25 year long relationship. Frank Angelo moved to Florida to pursue new musical projects and other business interests. Mack moved its production center into a 5,000 square foot space to keep up with demand. Mac was also featured on TV shows like Beverly Hills, 90210, and Melrose Place. Mac was used by Prince, Wilson Phillips, Gloria Estevan, and of course Madonna, who caused quite a rage when fans tried to buy all the t-shirts that imitated the one she was wearing running one day and photographed by the press. Human volunteers were used in patch tests in lieu of animals for cosmetic testing. Vic Studio Fix Foundation shade gauge of W, N, or C and low and high numbers rather than shade names was an industry game changer. Special themed collections were released each year. Early on, a supermodel lipstick collection, including Shrimpton, Varushka, Maud, Bardot, Carnaby, and Twiggy was released. Management for Twiggy complained so much that the shade was renamed Twig. Also in 1994, fake MAC products appeared everywhere, especially in Asia. MAC was losing a grip on legal regulations and the Franks decided to partner with a large company that was experienced to assist with this legal mumbo jumbo and a global expansion due to interest of their line around the world. Leonard Lauder of Estee Lauder bought 51% of Mac for $38 million. It was agreed that Toskin would remain creative director and Angelo would oversee business deals. They were told they could run the business freely and Estee Lauder will help them expand globally. In 1996, MAC cosmetics were used for the New York Fashion Week for the first time. On January 12, 1997, during routine surgery, 
Frank Angelo passed away from a heart attack. It was a shock to the Mack family. And because Angelo had never come out as gay to his family, there was no mention of Toscan or their 25 years together in the obituary. And Toscan had no say or help in the funeral arrangements, the burial, or what would happen to Angelo's personal effects. Angelo's mother came to the house and took all of Angelo's things and had Angelo cremated and buried in Montreal and not Toronto, which broke Tuscan's heart. With Estee Lauder's help, Mac grew over 500 stores worldwide. Frank Tuscan felt a little lost at the Estee Lauder run Mac, especially without Angelo to put together deals. Toscan decided that it was beyond his control, and so in February of 1998, Toscan signed the final contract selling remaining shares of Mac for $60 million. He stayed on briefly as creative director, but had difficulty dealing with the backlash. Toscan felt like he had given up his baby. He couldn't bear to go into Mac stores because he was no longer the go-to person for employees. Mac staff were sad and shocked. Vic Casali stayed on a couple years in research and development, but left to form his new own company, Cover Effects. Toscan's sister Julie, now Mrs. Casali, resigned her role of public relations at Mac and pursued other business interests. Donald Robinson became creative director at Estee Lauder. Estee assigned John Dempsey as Mac president in 1998, and he eventually would be overseeing the Mac AIDS Fund. A new creative director was brought on Mac, James Gager, and he has successfully continued Mac's edgy experimental horizons. Many collections came out under his direction. Toskin and his new partner, Darren Zakreski, a well-known hairstylist, got busy raising four adopted children, Jared, Crystal, Greg, and Kyle, and are enjoying domestic life. Fashion Cares ended its annual event with a huge farewell concert bash featuring Elton John. In 2015, Ever moving forward, Toscan teamed up with nutritionist Josh Braun to open the health restaurant Impact, which features nutritious, easy to digest foods in modern format like Power Bowls and Paleo. In 2017, Ulta began selling Mac in its standalone stores and online. Visit a Mac store or scroll through their online site to peruse high quality modern products chat with a makeup artist or get a makeup lesson, and take a virtual try-on. It's full of great ideas. Twenty nineteen saw a new creative director at Mac, Drew Elliott. Twenty twenty one, the biggest surprise happened in February. It was announced that Toscan was teaming up with Vic Casali once again to create and release a makeup line called Mob M O B. Mac has long been the industry standard by which all others compare themselves with the emergence of new high quality brands such as Pat McGrath, Charlotte Tilbury, Natasha Denona, Urban Decay and others. Mac has lost some customer interest due to the newest flavor of the week releases, 
but Mac has been consistent, innovative, inclusive, and charitable, and has changed the cosmetic industry forever. I will always be grateful for the contribution of Frank Toskin and Frank Angelo to the beauty community. If asked what brand I would buy if I could only buy one brand in the whole world, it would surely be Mac. So now that you know the story, let me show you a few of the products that I used in a full face demo. Welcome. Well, here I am, definitely up before, and I'm spraying the Prep and Prime Fix Plus. Got MAC Stroke Cream coming up in pink light. And this really gives you quite a glow. It's a really nice primer, it's hydrating. And you can see my face already has a bit of a glow to it and that'll show through in the makeup. This is the 24 hour eye base. I am putting that on. And then on the other side, I'm gonna use the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. Now that was created as a cream eye shadow base but people use that as a uh, eye primer and it works pretty well and i'm just showing the two colors that i have soft ochre is kind of more of a yellow tone going into studio fix concealer in nc20 i'm just doing a light little spattering around in the dark spots and i'll be blending that in using my ring finger i'm just sort of tapping that in before I put the foundation on. I like to do the concealer first and the foundation later. Shaking that up, it's the Water Weight Foundation NW20 on one side of my face. I'm just putting a few drops there on my tray. And I'm dabbing it on on that one side all over. And then I will be using my um, Real Techniques just to kind of work it in. It looks like it's blending in nicely. Yep. Now on the other side, I'm using the powder foundation in NW22, which is probably a half shade too dark for me. It spreads nicely. It's a beautiful powder foundation. Absolutely lovely semi-matte uh, finish and I am using that to set the eye primers as well. Now I'm using the Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette Light Medium. I'm just having a look at the colors here. Taking a small brush just doing a little bit of a V in the very corner towards my ear, blending that out so there's no harsh lines, doing the St. Bernard gels, and then along the forehead, doing a three kind of indirectly. You can see I'm already getting more of a healthy glow and my skin looks a lot more even between these two. Two different blushes on one side. We're gonna use the Blush Baby Powder Blush which I think is a really pretty natural color. I want a little heavy handed there. Of course, I'm under studio lighting. And on the other side is peaches, which is more of a corally orange tone. A little goes a long way. Went a little bit heavy again and putting it down in the decollete as well. We're using the Mineralized Skin Finish in Natural Light Plus. And I'm just kind of melding everything together with that as a top coat. Now the mineralized skin finish is what I'm using as a highlight. And I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful highlight using my fingers to just put it at third eye over the cupid's bow. And now I'm using the Shape and Shade Brow Tint in Fling, which is kind of a taupey uh, blonde shade. I'm not really keen on that. One side is liquid, one side is a pencil. 
pretty sloppy job on the eyebrows. Very, very overplucked from the 70s, unfortunately, from the, the disco days. And we're using um, a Technical liner. And this is a beautiful brown shade, slight shimmer to it, called Broke. Love that, Broke. <laughs> Going into the eyeshadow palette, this is the Amber Times 9, which are nine shades in the palette, and they are all neutral or nude based. Using the lighter shade on the lid and just on the inside corner. And just under the brow, a little bit light, not a stripe, but a light matte. I'm going into the medium light crease shade and I'm doing windshield wiper motions. And now I'm blending it a little with my finger on the inner corner, just kind of smearing it out till it is not harsh on the edges. Now, both of my eyes are slightly different, so I have to do a slightly different uh, angle over the crease there from one side to the other. Okay, they blended so nicely. I mean, they really do. Now the darker brown shade, I'm just putting in the corner and I'm blending it out. And then I'm moving it up into the crease and I'll probably use my fingers too. I tend to use my fingers a lot. I'm gonna use a pencil brush, or a smaller brush. Going into the darker shade and just going to line about halfway down and about halfway on the upper lid. It's a really nice little palette using the shimmer there on the center of the lid and the light shimmer on the inside corner. And then I'm just kind of going over, drawing a teeny bit of a line on the inner corner of both eyes. Using the powder blush in Pink Swoon as an accent to the eyes in the 10 and 2 position. Now this is a single eyeshadow and it's called Embark. It's more of a warm toned maroon color and I thought it would give a nice warm kind of cast to the brown right up towards where it meets the crease and I think it looks really beautiful. Now this is a loose pigment in vanilla. This is the to go size which is the size I would recommend for sure because a little goes a long way and I'm just tapping it in and I'm also putting it over some of my um, other places where I highlight it. Going into Cool Jazz, which is a little bit of a shimmery purpley blue. This is very dated as you can tell from my coffee cup. And I'm going to start off with the False Lashes Extreme Mascara on one side. I actually found this one a little difficult to use and I wasn't a big fan. And that's on that side. Okay, I'm showing you up and down. Now on the other side, I'm using the Giga Black Mascara, which I think is an amazingly good mascara. This was my favorite of the two. It separates, it gives you some good length, and I think it's a really nice, uh, you can build up a couple of um, coats and, and make a really nice big old honk and lash. But I like the control of this particular mascara, I really like it. And I made a little dab there, so I took that off with a Q-tip. And now, this one, I wanted to try, this is the Big and Bold Mascara, and I had bought it, I think, at a TJ Maxx. It was um, a limited edition mascara. It's quite um, fibery and thick, a little bit gloppy, but it did add another um, element to the, um, to the lashes. Going into the lip liners, Boldly Bare, which believe it or not, I still have, and I have sharpened it down to probably a two inch nib at this point and I did fill in my lips with the liner I'm trying to decide which of my lipsticks I'm going to use and I've decided Sea Share is one of the best that's the luster formulation which is my favorite and I think it's a really beautiful shade I'm just kind of setting everything with a little bit of prep and prime fix and it gives me a little bit of added hydration. 
and you can see that uh, everything came out rather nice. Okay, going to put some lip gloss on Among the Stars and that added a little bit of a warm sheen to the C Sheer lipstick. And there I am back with new hair and we're trying, we're first testing out the lash to see the size, cutting off the excess. And then I'm using my Duo Lash Glue. And I'm doing the little slinky thing that you do with lashes, looking down into my mirror with my hair down. I don't know why I decided to put my hair on at that point, but and I'm just going to kind of hold that in. I always have trouble with that side. Getting that lash into place. And I'm using an eye liquid eyeliner in between so the little flap of skin doesn't show in between the lash and my eyes. And I'm just cleaning everything up with a Q-tip. Am I doing the other side? I'm actually doing it my favorite way where I put the actual lash glue on my lids and then I put the lashes on. And then I'm gonna put that liner on over the top. That is the easiest way to me to put on false lashes. And I love the fact that Kiss just came out with a new lash glue marker where you can do that. Now I'm just putting a little bit of concealer on just to kind of clean up around the edge. And I have that little shadowing on the edge of my eyes. I don't know what that is, but here I am. And now I'm preening. I'm preening. So that was one of the types of hair I like to wear. <laughs> I was like, oh my, this is my real hair. <laughs> That's why it doesn't look quite so healthy. Um, since the video was filmed in 2019, of course, Mac puts out an extraordinary amount of products all the time and they're constantly um, updating and adding to their collection. I completely forgot to mention the skincare line that they added. Uh, I don't know if it was back in 92. Um, so I was really trying to locate all the positive information I could on the subject and give you um, a well-rounded perspective of MAC Cosmetics. Um, this is brand new and this is the uh, MAC Magic Extension Mascara. I'm wearing it today and it's actually kind of a stiff dry when it dries. It supposedly has a uh, five millimeter, five millimeter um, fibers in it. I don't know. Uh, when I first used it, the very first time I used it, I think I was like slightly underwhelmed because it just gave me a nice little daytime eye. It didn't really build up a lot of volume or a lot of lash. And that's kind of where it stayed. Even after a couple weeks when you're using a mascara, sometimes the the formula gets a little thicker and you can get more volume and body out of the out of the mascara but that's not quite the case with this um, this almost feels like the giga black formulation but the uh, the brush is a little bit different and i love giga black so i mean this is nice but the brush is pretty basic so you know i i think mac um, one of the weakest products in the line is probably the mascara because <laughs> i just this one didn't do it for me, sorry guys. But I still have like my light plus, I still have it and I scrape it and I spray it with uh, alcohol. Um, I still have and I have almost hit pan on my Painterly uh, Cream Eye Base. Um, I've probably gotten about 12 of these little sample size of the Fix Plus and of course, I've got lipsticks. 
these basic lipsticks that I have, uh, I've kept Sea Sheer, Kinda Sexy, and uh, Peach Blossom. And then Stark Contrast, this is the Ilea. Ilea. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry if I'm saying it wrong. But this is what a Viva Glam lipstick looks like in person. And of course, this is a color that if I were to wear this out, somebody would probably take my pulse or think I'm about to drop. <laughs> it doesn't work on everyone. But it's a cool concept and it's a good cause. I have a lot of MAC lipsticks that I don't wear. Um, I also got this Miley one because I thought it was a pretty red. It's a pretty bright red, more of an uh, orangey tone. And then we have um, this one, which is Nikki, Nikki Minaj. <laughs> Hot pink, and she ain't kidding. I love Nicki Minaj, and so I actually bought this because I was a big fan of Nicki. Now the boxes for the um, Viva Glams are very different than the technical regular boxes of the MAC lipsticks. Um, and I believe they still have the Back to MAC program going on, and I'm going to probably have some things for that. Um, I did get, I still, this. I think this is still the same one, my Baroque eye pencil. I love that. And this is the teeny little nib I have left of my Boldly Bare um, eye pencil. I've been sharpening it and using it. I think when I started it was about this long. So <laughs> I do love MAC and um, I do have some other things too. But I was really just kind of showing you a few of the things. Now I have linked below all of the products that I used on my face in the demonstration and you know things like the mascara and there's also links to videos um, in stark contrast to uh, the MAC docutorial. I'm hoping you'll take the time to watch my L'Oreal docutorial because you're going to see such a difference in the background of these brands. And I know a lot of people like to go into the drugstore and just buy a L'Oreal product because they think it's high quality and it's drugstore and it doesn't cost as much as some of the high-end stuff. But you have to see what you're supporting when you purchase that. Um, just for measure, I did. I do own a Estee Lauder lipstick. I think, what is this one called? This is Insatiable Ivory. And it's a really pretty kind of, uh, it's kind of a nudie uh, shade, really nice for springtime and summer. Very, very pretty. And I also have Ben Nye. This is about my 12th powder. I've had very, in, he's had kind of different types of uh, packaging. I do like they've got the raised Ben Nye letters on this, but this is the colorless powder from Ben Nye. And I'm sure that uh, Mr. Toskin carried this in the makeup art center. So um, thank you so much for your time and for watching. I hope you learned a lot about MAC today. It was a lot of fun revisiting all of that and it made me want to go out and buy a few more MAC products because I realized how much I loved some of them. And with all of the makeup that we're constantly given here on YouTube or we're constantly forced to buy because it's brand new, um, we tend to throw some of our favorites by the wayside and forget about them over time. And it was so nice to refresh my memory on how much I love MAC makeup. So I hope all of you are having a wonderful week. I hope you've all been vaccinated or getting it or in line or had at least one of them. And uh, play safe, everybody. Take care. Toodles.